Hi there, it's Jenny Kirk again, and we thought we'd uh, have a video showing another one of the display cabinets that I've got. Quite a few of these knocking about the house. Um, it's a good place to keep um, stuff that you're not running on the layout, and believe me, I've got plenty of that. Um, so we've got this little one here in the library. Uh, it fits nightly, nicely into the archway walkthrough to the kitchen area. But uh, we're going to start, start on the top and just work through what's in here. This is actually a really old mainline locomotive. You can tell from the huge great big motor block in the cab. But it's uh, the J72, still available through Backman. Um, it must be one of the, the longest continuous production run locomotives that there is. It still holds its own these days, but could really do with a new chassis. And then we've got with that a selection of uh, l &ER, uh, wagons. And of course the Scottish and Newcastle Breweries tank wagon has ended up here that we reviewed and opened the box in a previous video. But all of these standard Backman wagons, um, we've got the three planker with the l &ER container. We also have this eight plank northeastern coal wagon. Um, it's one that I do wish that Backman would produce more of the, the coal wagons and the, the open merchandise wagons in the big four liveries because to date, as far as I'm aware, this is the only uh, one of these um, seven or eight plank wagons that they've done in northeastern livery. And I feel that's a bit of a shame. If we move down to the next row, we've got uh, an assortment of southern wagons here behind uh, a Hornby X Day Pole uh, pug. Uh, in early BR livery, uh, the number 51218, I believe the real one of these is one of the two surviving pugs um, that's still around in preservation. But then we've got the plywood sided wagon here with these, the later Southern Railway logo. Uh, early on they used the big letters like this, but later on, uh, after the outbreak of the Second World War, uh, they started painting the much smaller insignia on the side of the wagons. Um, so that kind of dates this as being sort of the later Southern Railway period. But then we've got this, which is the five plank open. And again, it's the only uh, example that I believe Backman have done in the Southern Railway livery. And again, it's a shame because you know, I do like this colour. Uh, I do like this colour scheme. I'd love to have more of, of wagons like the Northeast and the Southern, and indeed other uh, constituent parts of the big four and indeed perhaps even pre-grouping but they seem loath to issue them. We then got the um, the planked Southern Railway van very similar in design to the plywood side uh, wagon but we see we've got the representation of planked sides instead of the plywood um, and we've got the large Southern Railway logo. Finishing it off, we've got the uh, pillbox uh, brake van, again with the large logo SR. Moving down to the next level, we've got, uh, this is a Bankman A4. Uh, now, there's a Hornby A4 in the other cabinet, which was shown in one of the previous videos, but as a comparison, this is the, the Bankman offering. Now, I got this because I was owed some money by a friend, and um, instead of <laughs> paying me the money, they just offered me this. And I think as the debt was only £35, I was like, yeah, whatever, that sounds good. So I got myself a Dominion of New Zealand. It runs quite nicely, even though it's uh, a slightly older Backman model. Coupled it up unprototypically to um, a Southern Railway uh, Backman Queen Mary brake van. Um, Move down to the next row, we've got a weathered War Department 280. Uh, this, again, bought secondhand. Um, lovely model, runs really well. I remember when Backman brought these out um, and I never quite got round to getting one, but I saw this in a second hand shop and I thought, I'll have that. I've got it coupled with an LMS um, a Stania 50 foot brake in um, the LMS line delivery. Next row down, we've got the standard class 4 mixed traffic tank locomotive 264. I actually bought this because as a child I had um, a couple of the Hornby 00 ones, or the Hornby 00 models of this particular type of locomotive. And um, it was just something I thought, well, I'd rather like to have it again. So um, I saw this second hand and I bought it. Coupled up, uh, again, unprototypically too, we've got the Great Western uh, 8 ton cattle truck, a Great Western uh, ventilated van, and of course the ubiquitous toad in Great Western livery again. The line below, we've got uh, when. When uh, Backman first brought out the Super D Class G2 
uh, 080 tender locomotive. It just really grabbed me. It was the first locomotive as well in the new, newer style Backman packaging. And it was just, in a way, it kind of blew me away. I, I can't really tell you what it is about this locomotive that grabbed me, but something did, and it still does, and it's one of my favourite locomotives. It's coupled to two of uh, these Shell BP tankers, ready weathered. These were issued some time ago as a um, limited edition model from the Hereford Model Centre. It was actually a set of four, um, and I bought all four. Um, all the same type of tanker wagon, but with different um, running numbers. Three of them were weathered, and then one was unweathered. Um, we've got two of the weathered ones here in this uh, this row. Next row down, we've got uh, Axminster Carpets, um, plywood-sided, ex-Southern, uh, ventilated van. This was a special commission from Buffers Model Railways near Axminster. Uh, and um, it was one of two limited edition wagons I got at the time. It's just something a little bit different, and they're one of the few uh, retailers to commission Backman to do um, effectively uh, branded or private owner uh, vans rather than open wagons or tankers. So it was just something that really caught my eye and just makes something a little bit different in a train. Then here we are, something different again. We've got the Great Western uh, Well Troll. But um, we've got on top of it a Great Western Coal Wagon. It's probably not particularly prototypical, but the upsum of this is that it allows me to have an extra wagon in the display case. And as I've got so much stock, it's always nice to try and get just that little bit more squeezed in. Then we've got the new Battle Wagon that uh, we talked about a lot in a previous video. So we're going to gloss over that and move on to one of the Hornby x Pol austerities. This is Whiston. Um, I believe the uh, the real um, one of these locomotives, the real Whiston, was one of the last steam locomotives in uh, commercial use. Uh, down on a colliery in somewhere in Manchester near, oh, it's not Walkden. Um, I couldn't tell you. I think Astley Green, Astley Green colliery rings a bell, but she was running up until around probably around 1984 and then passed immediately on into preservation. Next row down we've got an assortment of Great Western wagons and uh, the locomotive is uh, one of Backman's uh, 3F Ginties. I've got quite a few of these in various special commission liveries but this is the only one that I've got um, in a standard release from Backman. It's actually the one that came in a uh, Suburban set with two uh, Suburban coaches but I bought it cheap because one of the gears on its drive had split, um, so I was sold it to, um, for a tenner by the exasperated model shop owner. And uh, Backman, very nicely and kindly, just posted me a replacement gear once I'd uh, diagnosed the problem with it. So I got very, very lucky with that. Um, and also, when I was burgled, it was one of the locomotives that was stolen, and um, it did make its way back to me. So that accounts for the fact that it's missing steps at the back and there's some small scratches along the um, the cast running plate but it's uh, it's been through the wars so now it sits uh, really in need of a bit of a clean in this display cabinet. Two more limited editions on the next row down. These are commissioned from uh, TMC, uh, the model centre, formerly Trafford Model Centre and these are the Mark I uh, horse boxes. These in southern range and green. We've got one weathered one pristine. Um, I've also got a maroon uh, one of these, the Midland Region uh, wagon in maroon, um, but it's not in this display cabinet. These are actually a wonderful model. Uh, now I remember these fondly from Hornby 00 days. Hornby 00 of course did a model of this particular wagon. And I believe that this is the first time that a ready to run model of this particular prototype has appeared since Hornby 00 days. Um, the um, there is one surviving, at least, in uh, the National Railway Museum, and indeed I think it's at Shildon at the moment. Certainly there was one at Shildon when uh, I was there visiting. Coupled up to a Hornby Q1. Now, this is one of the locomotives that we uh, covered in the unboxing video, so I'm not really going to dwell on that, but I just love the... Um, sort of the kitsch juxtaposition of the ugliness in it. Um, it's just something about that locomotive that I really like. Final shelf in this cabinet, we've got an assortment of LMS wagons. Um, these are actually um, 
these vent vans that um, they were originally in the mainline catalogue. They're actually quite a long-standing uh, model that's been around the block a few times, but still holds its own. A uh, couple next to a much more recent uh, Backman offering of the um, two plus one. Uh, planked wagons, as you see it's got the thin planks and the thick thick planks and this was uh, a bid by the uh, railway companies to make better use of timber stocks and then we've got the one plank wagon with uh, a pair of uh, AF containers finally the locomotive, again this is the Hornby X Daypole um, Pug I love this locomotive, it's one of my favourite classes of locomotives but this is the uh, ready weathered edition that was produced uh, quite a few years ago now uh, and um, it does actually have unfortunately the same running number as one of the later issues uh, of this type of locomotive that Hornby have done and it does annoy me a bit they seem to have recycled a, a couple of the running numbers on different releases um, I believe that uh, 51235 has appeared at least two, possibly three times. So uh, you have to be careful when buying these that you don't suddenly find that you've actually ended up with the same locomotive um, but just with some minor detail differences in terms of the British Rail Crest or having British Railways written on its uh, tank. And that's everything that's in this cabinet. Uh, don't forget to like this video. Uh, share it as well if you uh, feel that uh, it's something that other people need to see. And uh, subscribe to the video channel so you can be the first to see new videos as they are posted. But uh, you take very good care of yourself until next time. And uh, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying, what's up? Bye for now.